This video is sponsored by Fetch Rewards. So every year I like to use that week of Halloween as sort of a transition year. It sort of marks the end of the regular season of this show and the beginning of the holiday season. That's so why I always like to do a little fun holiday treat or something like that you could do with your kids or, you know, let's be serious. As adults, we like these things too. I kind of just want something sweet and fun before we head into Thanksgiving food. So today we're gonna make something that my mom used to make as a kid, we used to make together, a spooky little Halloween spiderweb cake. So let's just jump right into it. Now there's nothing special about my baking skills. I can follow a good recipe I like to seek out people who know what they're doing and when it comes to cakes, there's really only one person I kind of go to and that's liveforcake.com. She's a little bit of like my cake consultant whenever I have a question. I shoot her a DM, she clarifies it. Fantastic, very talented. If you ever have cake questions, go check out Liv. Her link to her website is down in the description. But before we jump into making this basic chocolate cake with some white buttercream, we need to thank our sponsor today, Fetch Rewards. Fetch Rewards is an app that offers users free rewards on groceries and thousands of other participating products. It's fast, it's easy, it's fun. Here's how it works. Just go to the app store, download Fetch Rewards. It's totally free and you can actually click the link down in the description and it'll take you right there. You're ready to scan immediately. You press the little camera button and you can scan the receipt right through the app. Once you scan the receipt, you'll see you instantly get rewards pushed to your account. These points then turn into gift cards like Amazon gift cards, Visa, MasterCard gift cards. Real money that you could spend on anything. And if you buy stuff online, no problem. Groceries, all Amazon products, you're gonna get points for these things. All you have to do is just link your Amazon account and your email address and you press this little E button and it'll scan your Amazon account, scan your email for receipts and then process it. You get points pushed to your account. You can even scan restaurant receipts. If you've got a really long receipt, you scan multiple photos of it and the app will stitch it all together into one, push you some points. And since I've been using this app, it's kind of been like a game. It's collecting as many receipts as I can, getting as many points as I can, seeing how many I can accumulate. The best part about this app is that it's totally free. You don't even have to give your credit card information. So go download the app now. The link is in the description right up below the like button. Use code not another cooking show, one word, and you're gonna get a whopping 4,000 points instantly when you scan your first receipt. So you wanna take advantage of this offer. It's for a limited time only. Go download the app, get your 4,000 points, and thank you Fetch Rewards for sponsoring this video. So first I wanna cut some parchment paper rounds that fit the bottom of the cake pans. Get those out of the way, we're gonna need those later. And now we're gonna make the chocolate ganache for the spider web, which is two cups of bittersweet or semi-sweet chocolate, one cup of cream. You're gonna put that on top of a double boiler over some simmering water, not boiling, and then you're gonna slowly melt that until it becomes a beautiful little chocolate sauce. Hit it with some salt, and once it's completely melted, get it off the heat to cool. Mm. Okay, the chocolate ganache is done. This is gonna be the spider web, so we're gonna let this cool. As it cools, it's gonna sort of solidify to the point where we can sort of pipe it into nice little spider webs. So it's gonna put this off to the side. Now we can make the cake. Okay. By the way, now you should have your oven preheating to 350 degrees. First of all, my parchment cutouts, we're gonna grease the two eight inch pans and then dust with cocoa powder. We've got some good Dutch cocoa powder. And according to Liv, it's okay to use regular cocoa powder, but Dutch cocoa powder has uh, some specialness to it. And then put in the parchment paper. Put these off to the side. So now I'm just gonna sift all of the dry ingredients. The full recipe is gonna be linked down in the description. I'm just gonna roll through and follow her instructions. It says to have a cup of water hot for the wet ingredients, so I have that going on the stove that's ready to go for later. 
always spoon in the flour and then level it off. That's the proper way to measure flour if you're not using a scale. And then we're gonna go in with two cups of all-purpose flour, two cups of granulated sugar, two teaspoons of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, and three quarters of a cup of Dutch processed cocoa powder. Then we're just gonna whisk that all together and mix it well. Dry ingredients are mixed. Let's mix the wet ingredients. We're gonna add two large eggs at room temperature, two teaspoons of vanilla, one cup of buttermilk at room temperature, a half cup of vegetable oil, and then a cup of that hot water that we're gonna slowly whisk in so it doesn't cook the eggs at all. Once that's fully combined, we're then gonna add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients. Just mix it really well, scrape that bottom of that bowl, make sure there's no dry bits stuck to the bottom. Once it's well incorporated, we can add them to the cake pans. Man, when you cook with chocolate, you get it everywhere. Okay, so the batter's done. Now we fill the pans. She actually does something really smart where she weighs the pans so they you get an equal amount in each. Then we're just gonna pop that into the 350 degree oven and cook that for about 45 minutes. After 45 minutes, poke the center of the cake with a toothpick and if it pulls out and it's mostly dry, the cakes are done. We're just gonna let these cool for about 10 minutes in the tin and then we're gonna flip them out of the tin and let them cool completely. You can't mess around with icing a hot cake or even a warm cake, it's gonna melt it. You need it fully completely cooled. Once the cakes have a minute in the pan, you can give them a flip onto a wire rack where you can let them cool for at least an hour until they're fully cooled down. I'm gonna set them off to the side. We're gonna make the buttercream. As a basic buttercream, we've got um, two cups of room temperature softened butter, unsalted, six cups of powdered sugar, sifted. First step is to whip the butter into a really light, creamy consistency. So you're gonna give this a few minutes on its own before we start to add the powdered sugar in one cup at a time. Touch of vanilla. Now it says to add a little bit of cream for the right consistency, but I think I like this consistency. So if you add any cream to adjust it, that's up to you, but this is gonna be good. All right, so start off with the bottom, put a little bit of that frosting to keep it in place. One cup of frosting. Then get that second layer on top and then another cup of the buttercream on the top layer and then the rest along the sides. Oh my God, that was so stressful. Now we have to decorate it with the spider web. Here's our chocolate ganache. This came out of the fridge, so it's a little hard, so I'm just gonna give it a little whip with a spoon, and it's gonna be nice and smooth and easy to pipe. Get a piping bag, fill it up, and we're ready to make the spider webs. Start in the center, and then pipe straight lines to the edge of the cake. Then start to connect those straight lines with these curved lines to form the web. Uh, it's not so easy towards the middle, but it gets easier in the second and third layers. And it might not look great now, but it will come together, I promise. Mm. 
there we go. Starting to look like a spider web to me. Just kind of cool the chocolate down a little bit more before I attempt to do the sides. I mean, I, I've been considering not even touching the sides because I'm impressed I got it this far. I don't know, what do you think? Should I keep going? Maybe I'll keep going. It started to melt a little bit towards the end, became looser, and I'm gonna have to be very delicate on the side, so I want it a little harder. So a few more minutes in the refrigerator and then I can finish it up. This part's a little tricky is you're gonna have to kind of tilt this cake to make these nice curved edges and it's, uh, it's, a it's a bit harder than I thought it was gonna be. You can kind of cover up your mistakes but do your best to make it work and use these spiders to cover up any big issues. Oh man. I'm telling you, her cakes are the best. I know you might mistake me for a professional baker, but I promise you I'm not. I would say the ganache is maybe not the best piping as it melts, so you get these different consistencies. Maybe a black froth, a chocolate frosting might be a better route, but um, I think it tastes great. It's fun. Don't eat the spiders. Maybe you can make a spider. That's probably a smarter thing to do, but I think these look cool. This is what my mom used to do. We just took them off, put them on the plate. It's all good. Halloween might be a little weird this year. Maybe you might be doing something a little different than you normally do. Maybe it's time to make a spider cake. Thank you all for watching. You should go make this cake. Mm, super moist. You should also go check out the merch store. Pick up a Hate Less Cook More hoodie. If you want to become a patron, there's a link down below. All the links always down below if you want to support the show. Plenty of options to do so down there. I thank everyone who supports the show. It's time to get into the holiday season. So that's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, have a great Halloween. Take care of yourself and go feed yourself.